Oh, Miss Odom. It is yogurt, sir. I know. Okay. It's how, yogurt. How about it's, this? So. That is not mine. No, sir. Okay. I'm not going to ask you any No, questions. sir. Oh, I'm not going to ask you any great questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? Honesty is going to go a long way with me, okay, man? Yeah. All right. Boy. I've got to test this. The center console. No way, man. All right, look, man. It did field test presumptive positive for methamphetamine. Okay? Let me ask you this. Yeah. If I read you your rights, will you talk to me? I talk to you, man. Okay. man I'm just saying, man. I ain't just... Dude, I'm fucking... We're, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there, okay? You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. The evidence of trial demonstrated that the defendant planted methamphetamine or paraphernalia in each of these victims' cars under the guise of performing a lawful roadside search of their cars. He then falsified arrest reports and submitted them to the sheriff's office. These false records were later relied on in this very courthouse to prosecute these innocent victims for crimes they did not commit. And at the time of his suspension from the sheriff's office, he had a stash of more methamphetamine and more paraphernalia hidden in his patrol car for that very use. Welcome back to Legal Descent, where we evaluate your constitutional rights before they're taken away. Merry Christmas, everyone, and I hope that you are all enjoying a happy holiday season with your loved ones, no matter where you are. In 2019, Jackson County, Florida Sheriff Deputy Zachary Wester was arrested on 67 charges of racketeering, official misconduct, fabricating evidence, and false imprisonment. Suspicion arose after Wester pulled Teresa Odom over for allegedly having inoperative brake lights in 2018. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Should I turn in here to get off? You're fine. Uh, You're fine. Uh, Deputy uh, Westwood uh, Jackson County Sheriff's uh, Office. Uh, Reason for my stop is um, your brake lights. Yes, they work one minute, and the next minute they don't work, and then a few seconds later they just flash. Okay, I think so. It's probably because the rain. Okay, that's fine. You got your driver's license yes, on you, ma'am. I just got tickets the other day. I'll be glad to show oh, them to you. Oh, did you? <laughs> nah, you're fine. All right, thank you. I'll be right back. Um, my truck may or may not start. When I turn it off, you may have to push me off, so I'm going to go ahead and see. Okay. Uh, do you need to turn it off? Do you have to turn it off? It'd be probably better. Okay. I'm going uh, hard time with it as it is. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what. Can if we I can... answer my phone? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can answer your phone. I'm just trying to think what's going to be best for, uh, what is, I mean, it... what is that right there? What is what? That right there. What is what? This? That straw right there. This is not a straw. It's an ink pen. Oh, okay. It's okay. an ink pen. It, it was connected. It looked like it was no connected straw. to that art. Just hey, hang tight, okay? Um, anything the vehicle need to be concerned about? Bombs, hand grenades, Drugs, rocket launchers. No. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, here's what I do probably 10 or 15 times a shift, okay? Um, there's going to be a K9 coming in a minute, and she's going to walk around the car, okay? But instead of doing that, would you consent to a search of your vehicle? You're fine with that? Okay. All right. You mind stepping out and just hanging out with this deputy right back here? No, I don't. I just, I'm scared of being in this traffic. To be no, honest. I, deputy Hey K will take care of you. I will continue to say this until I am blue in the face. Never, ever consent to a search of your car, person, or property without a warrant. You will never win a Good Citizen Award for relinquishing your rights. At this point, Deputy Wester went back to his squad car and then returns to the truck to begin searching. Pay close attention to his left hand as he is putting on his gloves. It appears that there is a small plastic bag being held in his left hand. The bag is extremely similar to the plastic bag that is retrieved from the car when the deputy's body cam is conveniently not pointed in the direction of where the bag is coming from. Miss Odom vehemently denied that it was hers.
Do what now? All right. I'll see if I can find it for you. I'm going to ask you any direct um, questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? So just hang out with Deputy Hake here. What is it? I have an idea. We're going to test it, though, okay? The substance tests positive for methamphetamines. Here's the exchange and cross-examination during the trial. Okay, like several of the other listed victims in the case, she consents to the search of her car, doesn't she? Her she, does. she does, yes. She mentions that she's got $5 that's missing um, in, that, in that video before you find anything. Isn't that right? That is correct, yes. Okay. She's specifically drawing your attention to, to her purse or her pocketbook because she's missing $5. Isn't that right? Correct, yes. Okay. She's not trying to take her purse with her when she gets out of the car and goes st and stands with backup Deputy Hake, is she? I don't believe so, no. Video doesn't show, and, and the video right. doesn't depict it. Do you remember hearing it? I do not remember it. Right. Okay, so she didn't try to take her purse. Now you say you've testified on direct that you don't dispute that there's something in your hand, like those photos the state's exhibits depict. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, I don't dispute that at all. Your dispute is that you say that it's not the same item that you charged Teresa Odin with. Correct. Correct. It is not the same item, right? It was a different baggie, is what you say, correct? Correct. Okay. Where on your body camera video do we see you handle that baggie and, and e either picking it up or putting it down or looking at it closely to determine what's in it? Are you referring to the baggie that was in my hand before I put my search gloves on? Yes, sir. Okay. So as you noticed on the video, there were multiple semis, multiple vehicles, driving by in the opposite direction. Whenever I put that baggie in the front driver's side floorboard, I never seen it again. I'm not sure if it's because when a semi came through, it blew it into the roadway. After I found the baggie in her purse containing methamphetamine, and after I found the spoon, which was used as paraphernalia, there was really no need for me to go walk across 231 at the busiest time of the day to try to find something that I didn't even know was evidentiary value or not. Why'd you set it down on the floorboard if you didn't know if it had evidentiary value or not? Why'd so you the, set it down? If it was already in your hand, why would you set it down on the floorboard with that setting like you've just described to the jury if you didn't even know if it had evidentiary value or not? So that I could search the vehicle. How about searching what's in your hand? How about that? Wouldn't it make more, wouldn't you agree that it would make more sense to start with what's already in your hand before you, if, if, if it indeed was a different thing, that it would make more sense to start with what's already in your hand before you set it down on the floorboard on admittedly a busy road? Yeah. In this particular case, no, that would not make sense because whenever I looked at the bag, it did not appear, as I testified earlier, that it was of evidentiary value. You don't um, look. You you just said a moment ago to this jury that you didn't know if it had evidentiary value or not. Okay. You just said that a moment ago, and now you're saying that you already looked at it and it didn't have evidentiary value. Which one okay. is it? So, as I just stated a couple seconds ago, it did not appear to have evidentiary value. I did not examine it. I did not open it up at this point and examine it. It did not appear to be of anything of evidentiary value. At what point on that video do you have time or does it even show you looking at it to make some type of a 
reasonable inference as to whether or not it had evidentiary value. Sure. So whenever I went to the passenger side of Miss Odom's truck, from the passenger side, you could pretty much see the whole front cabin of that vehicle. <clears throat> whenever I looked across, I noticed that that particular item that was in my hand was no longer on the driver's side floorboard. Didn't really concern me that much because I'd found methamphetamine in her purse and I'd found the spoon. Like I said earlier, Mr. Williams, I was not going to walk across Highway 231 or shut down traffic to try to find something that was most likely just a piece of trash. It was already in your hand and you made a conscious decision to set it on the floorboard, didn't you? I did, yes. Did you or did you not look at it? This is this is assuming that uh, clearly we're disputing this, okay? That it's a 100 percent we are, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So your your testimony is that it was a different item and in order for you to put it on the ground you had to determine whether or not it had evidentiary value because it was already in your hand so from it going from your left hand onto the floorboard at what point you stop and look at it and handle it the way you do all the other exhibits that you found in sure. all the other videos to make that decision if well, that if it was indeed different okay i would not have opened up a baggie with my bare hands first of all i will say that um, your so, hand, your, no, 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 I'm sorry, we need to, we need to, let me break that down. It's already in your bare hands. You've already picked it up in your bare hand. Correct. Okay, so what difference is opening it up with your bare hands going to make? But, Mr. Williams, I didn't open it up and turn it inside out for the contents, if there were any contents, to get on my bare skin. Was it a clear baggie? I believe it was an off-white baggie. You could have seen inside it, couldn't you? I don't believe I could have. With this particular baggie, I don't believe I could have because from what I remember, it was an off-white, almost an eggshell white. You can't give a consistent answer on this because there isn't a consistent answer, correct? Hold on to your hats because we'll come back to this trial very soon. So how did it even get to trial? Former Assistant State Attorney Christina Pumphrey was the one to blow the whistle on Deputy Wester. There's not an apparent motive. Um, the typical person he, re he arrested was a low-income white person. It was someone that, if, in my experience with methamphetamine use, it was what your typical methamphetamine user would look like. Broken down cars, mufflers hanging off, you know, the fender panel is different color than the rest of the car, the people that their clothes are clean but they don't look clean, <laughs> that level of person. and. Most of his arrest was a low-income white person. This speaks to the broken down state of our system and how we lack the necessary checks and balances to our law enforcement agencies. Prosecutors need to verify that police officers are truly upholding their oaths. Judges need to hold prosecutors accountable and we the people deserve better. In May of 2021, Wester was put on trial. During that trial, 12 victims came forward, providing evidence of how they were accused and arrested for contraband that was planted by Deputy Wester. All of these traffic stops included irregularities with Wester's body cam, including it being pointed in the wrong direction, being turned off, and conveniently being turned off right as he found the drugs. On Mr. Emanuel's video, We've seen it, it's, it's a partial video. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that. How did that happen? So the body camera was initially uh, attempted to activate the body camera to start the recording. In the recording, you will see about a 30 second, <clears throat> sorry, about a 30 second period where there is no audio. There is nothing but video. After the body camera had experienced what I <clears throat> um, believe is what's called a reset function, the camera was back operational. I was able to double tap the center button and the video started recording as it should. And as it starts recording, we see where you are and then we see you go back and make contact with Mr. Emanuel and Trooper O'Pry and you mention that syringe and that bag, correct? Correct. But it's clear from the video that that's not the first discussion of it, that prior to the video recording, it must have been discussed as well. Yes, sir, as I testified. All right. So that means that you had already been around on the driver's side car and had the chance to be in the area that you said you first saw it, correct? When I was retrieving the firearm, that is correct. But that's not on your body camera video, is it? It is not. 
And the beginning of the stop's not on the body camera video, is it? It is not. It doesn't start and it doesn't actually show anything until after you've already been in the car and have the opportunity to switch sides to the other side of the car. And after you've already had the opportunity to talk to Josh Emanuel with Trooper O'Pry right there, isn't that right? That is correct. Now, Mr. the other Mr. Williams in this case, Reginald Williams. Yes, sir. We don't have any body camera video for that incident. Is that correct? Can you take um, a minute to get situated if you, your report there? If you don't mind, give me just a second. Please. Yes, sir. <clears throat> It is my understanding that there was no body camera footage um, provided in this case. Why don't if, we have one for him? If the body camera video for Mr. Reginald Williams would not have been deleted from the server, this jury would have had a chance to review that body camera. Who deleted it? Mr. Williams, I don't know. All I can attest to is whenever I start the video and I upload it to the server, what happens to it after it leaves the server? I'm not in control of that. If someone deleted it, did they delete the same, the, the front part of the manual video? Did they go in and delete that as well? Mr. Williams, I've already testified as to the first part of that manual video, and I made it very clear that the body camera experienced a malfunction. And it so happened that that error occurred at the time that you would have first gotten in that car and first had the opportunity to see the syringe and the baggie. Isn't that right? I would disagree with that. That's not when the error occurred? I would disagree with that. Then why isn't it on the video? We're talk let's talk about Reginald Williams. That's sure. who we're talking about. And sure. that one, that clearly pertained to an arrest, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Why in the world would that have been deleted? I wish I knew that answer. For Mr. Van, he actually consented to the search before you ever even asked. Is that right? He did, yes. He told you about his criminal history. Yes, he did. He told you what he'd been in prison for. Yes, sir. For, for meth. He just he told it to you. You didn't he really did. have to push him on it, did he? I did not. Okay. And that video starts when it when it does, the one that we saw. Do you dispute that? I mean, that's an accurate video? That is an accurate video, yeah. Okay, and it starts when you're on the passenger side, having already been in the driver's side. Isn't that right? That is correct. Why is that? Um, for this particular case, I don't recall um, if I experienced an issue like I experienced in the Emmanuel traffic stop. From our standpoint with the video, it appears to be the same as the Emmanuel stop, doesn't it? That could be your opinion, sure. Like Mr. Day, we don't have a video from you showing the search, do we? That is correct. And again, like Mr. Driggers, and like Mr. Day, we don't have a video from you showing the search of Mr. Clinney's truck, do we? We do not. Mr. Benjamin Bowling's arrest, we don't have a body camera video for either, do we? No, sir, we do not. Many of these people spent time in jail, served probation, lost jobs, and one even lost custody of his daughter because of Wester's crimes. All of these injustices caused by a deputy who enjoyed singing Christmas carols as he searched their cars, dropping drugs into center consoles and lunch boxes. On the 18th of May, the jury delivered their verdict, finding Deputy Wester guilty on 19 of the 67 charges filed against him. On July 13th of 2021, Wester was sentenced. Counts 7, 9, 10, 31, 33, 34, 41, 44, 48, 64, and 65 are to be served consecutive to each other for a total sentence in this case of 12 years, six months, and eight days in the Florida Department of Corrections. This sentence of 12 years, six months, and eight days in the Florida Department of Corrections is to run concurrent with a five-year Department of Corrections sentence in count one. Therefore, it is the intention of the court that you are sentenced to serve a total of 12 years, six months, and eight days in the Florida Department of Corrections. During the sentencing hearing, Prosecutor Tom Williams had this to say about Deputy Wester. Now, Judge, the defendant's criminal conduct 
represents an egregious breach of the public trust. The, the state's first exhibit in this case was his identification card from the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. And I read an opening statement and, and in the record in, at trial, the oath that he swore to hold that badge and that ID card. And in democratic free societies, people voluntarily grant their government awesome powers that they deem necessary for public safety and protection. And with that power, we've all heard this said before, with that great power comes great responsibility. The defendant made choices to violate that trust and commit crimes against the very citizens that he had sworn to protect. That's what he was convicted for, violating that trust to commit crimes against them, to victimize them. His actions thus attack the very foundation of the criminal justice system that we enjoy in these free democratic societies. His punishment should reflect that. Those are the surrounding circumstances. Williams is absolutely correct. People often ask me, why am I so hard on law enforcement and government in general? It's because so much power, so much trust, and so much of our freedom is wrapped up in agencies and individuals who have the ability to destroy everything our society stands for with just the stroke of a pen. Almost 120 criminal cases were dropped involving Wester that occurred between 2016 and 2018. No one knows for sure how many lives he ruined and how many reputations he destroyed. And no one knows for sure how many other police officers are out there just like Wester that have not been caught yet. What do you think? Is 12 and a half years enough to deter other officers from making the same heinous mistakes as Deputy Wester? Let us know in the comments below. Merry Christmas, everyone. And remember that no matter who you are, you have value and you have rights. Do not be afraid to use them. And we'll see you next time right here on Legal Descent.